I've outfitted this quadcopter with everything it needs to fly completely autonomously using onboard cameras to detect obstacles and figure out exactly where it is in the environment. No GPS required. My goal is to be able to upload some coordinates that I want it to fly to, push a button, and have it figure out how to get there around obstacles. Sort of like how we use Google Maps to figure out how to get somewhere and avoid traffic on the way. You might ask, why does a drone need to plan a route like Google Maps? Can it just fly in a straight line over any obstacles? And that's a valid point. Many drones can already do this just fine. I'm more interested in scenarios where there's unknown obstacles in close quarters. Maybe somewhere where there isn't GPS signal and the drone would need to plan a path around obstacles that it can't simply fly over. This idea of planning a path for motion is a very large and complex field called, wait for it, motion planning. In this video, we're gonna talk about motion planning and how I integrated it on this drone so I can fly around autonomously. Before we can understand what I'm trying to do with motion planning, we first need to understand how a more conventional drone can fly around on its own. This is a simulation of a drone running the commonly used PX4 autopilot and Q ground control for mission planning. I've loaded up a set of waypoints for the drone to take off and follow before finally coming back to land. Note that I had to manually load the waypoints and create the flight plan. The drone is actually quite dumb in that it can only fly from one point to the next with no real perception of the world around it needing to be told what to do for every step of the way. It only knows its orientation from the onboard inertial measurement unit and its GPS coordinates. So this isn't that much different than me just manually piloting the drone myself. Um, I have direct control over the drone's angle in flight right now through my radio. Um, and the only feedback the flight controller is getting is the IMU attitude or the orientation and my commanded desired angles. Um, so if I let go of the stick right now, It'll probably drift around a little bit. Yeah, uh, there's no position feedback. So if I want to get the drone from point A to point B, I just pitch the stick forward until it gets to point B. Uh, and this is exactly what the autopilot on an autonomous drone is doing, uh, just replacing me as the pilot getting the drone from point A to B. The autopilot knows where the next waypoint is, knows where the drone currently is, and uses this to calculate an error in position. That error is fed into the actual controller that calculates the angle the drone needs to be at to start heading toward the next waypoint, just like a pilot would do. Sometimes this is a PID controller, but there's more advanced types of controllers too. So this one definitely doesn't, but you may have seen other drones with simple little distance sensors, and this basically allows for basic obstacle avoidance and really just prevents you from running directly into a wall. Uh, but my point is, uh, common autonomous drones that run PX4 or Ardu Pilot don't really have the ability to detect obstacles with a camera and then update their flight plan while they're in the air. So that's exactly what we're doing with this guy. And to do that, we need some special equipment on board the drone. Uh, this is my custom flight controller that basically stabilizes the drone at a desired angle based on the radio input. But I have that set up on a switch so I can hand it off to the computer whenever I want, but for safety, I can always revert back to my manual control. The flight computer that replaces me as the pilot when I give it permission and lets me do some computer vision is the Raspberry Pi 4 running robot operating system. And that sends angle set point commands to my flight controller over a serial connection. Robot operating system is basically a software framework that lets you run many different scripts and interface with many different sensors at the same time. So I'm using it to run all the different code models I wrote. Speaking of sensors, the flight controller provides IMU orientation data to the flight computer, which can then be visualized live. It's also got a LiDAR distance sensor on the underside for really precise altitude measurements. But the key sensor I'm using is this Intel RealSense tracking camera. This camera can accurately pinpoint its position in 3D space by tracking features and their motion between camera frames known as optical flow. This can give a pretty good measurement of relative velocity, which is then integrated for position. Anyway, the point is, this camera gives a very good live measurement of the drone's position and velocity, otherwise known as odometry, without the need for a GPS module at all, which means it works indoors too. It's very sensitive to vibrations, so I mounted it on some very soft foam padding. There's another camera right underneath the tracking camera for my actual computer vision obstacle detection, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. First things first, we need to make sure we can do basic waypoint autonomy like I talked about earlier. So. We're going to take off in manual mode, and I'm gonna flip the switch and hand control of the vehicle over to the Raspberry Pi 4 and that Ross environment. And that has a position controller that I wrote um, based off of the measurements from the RealSense tracking camera. 
So we're gonna take off. We're going to hand control over to the Raspberry Pi. Uh, it should hold position. And then we're gonna start sending it some waypoints from the ground station just to verify that we have that baseline level of autonomy. And then from there, we can add the higher level of autonomy with the obstacle detection and the uh, motion planning. Okay, I have the drone right now. Now I'm gonna flip my switch and it's gonna to go to computer control and it's gonna hold its position. So now computer control and I am hands off and it is hovering in place here. Okay, so now I'm going to send it to a waypoint about one meter forward, S sending. Okay, there it goes. And we're doing this at a fixed altitude of about one meter because this project is immensely complex and high risk and I only have one quad, so we're gonna keep the altitude low. Okay, so let's send it one meter to the left now. Sending. Sending. There we go. There it goes. Excellent. All right, I'm gonna take over control and uh, land. All right, so now we've demonstrated the baseline waypoint autonomy. Now we can let the Raspberry Pi do the obstacle detection with the camera, and then also let it do the waypoint planning through motion planning. Let's talk about motion planning really quick. This is a node or a waypoint we can travel to. This is an edge or a path we can travel over to go to a new node. A bunch of interconnected edges and nodes is called a map or a graph. Edges have an associated cost or value describing how easy or difficult it is to travel over. Normally we just use the length of the edge as the cost, but you can use different metrics like time needed to travel over it or energy required instead. So when you pull up directions on Google Maps and parts of the roads are red, uh, we know that means there's most likely traffic on those roads and they'll take longer to drive through. But what it really means is that the edge cost to travel over those roads is much higher and Google Maps will most likely direct you around them when planning your route. So let's talk about the algorithm behind this. So we have a graph we can freely travel over and we've defined our starting and ending nodes. We wanna find the fastest or optimal path between them. Let's use Dijkstra's algorithm. We take the starting node and look at all of the neighbor nodes connected to it through an edge. As we look at the new nodes, we add them to the list according to the total edge cost it took to get to them from the start in descending order. And we note the node that came before it known as its parent. Then we start moving down the list of checked nodes in order of descending total cost, checking all nodes connected to the current node and adding those to the list accordingly. We only update the total cost to a new node if it hasn't been checked yet, or if the cost to get to it from the current node is less than the cost from the last time it was checked. We keep doing this until we reach the goal node. We can then trace the shortest path backwards by following the parent nodes we recorded. Finding the quickest path over a simple graph may seem trivial, but it gets exponentially harder on more complex graphs. You may see a small problem with Dijkstra's algorithm. We're searching in all directions, which slows it down. What if we know the general coordinates of the goal node? A star is an algorithm nearly identical to Dijkstra's, except we use the linear distance between the current node we're at and the goal node to help prioritize what order we should circle back to expand from that node in the list we talked about earlier. This leads to an algorithm that guarantees we find the optimal solution in the absolute shortest number of moves. We're gonna use an algorithm slightly different from A star called D star light uh, that we'll use to replan when we detect these obstacles mid flight. The main difference is that this algorithm searches backwards from the goal node to the start node. This means that if we change the starting node to correspond to a new position we've moved to, we can use the existing search tree to quickly get our new solution path. So I think the last thing I haven't really talked about is this detection camera, not the tracking camera, but uh, I use a separate camera for obstacle detection. Uh, and it's tracking these markers called April tags. The detection algorithm extracts the position of the tag relative to the camera pretty accurately. So to get the position of the obstacle in the global reference frame, we just need to add the relative tag position to the current position of the drone. This way, when the drone flies around and sees the obstacles, we can build a map of the environment. All right, a few last things before we get flying here. Um, I've hard-coded in a maximum detection radius on this obstacle detection camera. 
And that basically prevents the drone from just taking off and immediately detecting all of the obstacles before it's even had a chance to traverse over some of the course. I really want to force some of that replanting mid-flight. Um, another thing I've hard-coded in is uh, the size of the obstacles is a little bit expanded from what they physically are in the real world. And this basically uh, prevents the drone from trying to go through any really tight areas that it actually can't fit through, even though uh, technically it might be able to. We just sort of have that safety, safety margin. To summarize the uh, autonomy framework that I have on board, uh, we're basically detecting these obstacles and then getting their position in the global frame. And then we're telling the motion planning algorithm D-Star Light that we've detected a new obstacle. That then returns a new uh, solution path of waypoints. Way and then we have a state machine that iterates over those waypoints, uh, allowing the drone to traverse forward along the course. And those waypoints are just being fed into that position controller that we tested earlier. So uh, hopefully this will work. I gave the drone an empty starting graph to start out and D-Star Light finds the shortest path over it, which in this case is just a straight line. When the drone detects an obstacle, it modifies that graph and sets the edge cost to infinity in the area where the obstacle is located, shown in red. And then D-Star Light finds a new solution path. Since the affected edge costs are now infinity, the algorithm won't use them in computing the newer path, and we get a path around the physical obstacles. Pretty darn cool. Keep in mind that detection radius I set for the obstacles. The drone is essentially blind to anything farther away than about two meters, so it thinks going to the left is the faster path, even though we can clearly see there's obstacles to that side. But as it detects those new obstacles, eventually it realizes it has to go around to the other side. Remember, the motion planning algorithms can only plan a path over edges and nodes that we predefine. I've just got to say that forcing the algorithm into this edge case and seeing it work on the first try was extremely satisfying. This definitely isn't a finished project, but it's more of a demonstration of some of the elements that go into making a fully autonomous quadcopter that can fly itself around. Uh, once you have the building blocks in place for a complex project like this, it's pretty easy to go back and expand on those individual elements to make the overall system more capable. Uh, for example, we could swap out that cheaty April tag detection algorithm I used for something more robust to maybe detect buildings. Or we could expand our motion planning from two dimensions to three. Anyway, I hope you learned something interesting.